The presidency accuses the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, of trying to destroy its relationship with its allies, while the Mieti Allah states that Nigeria will be ruled forever by the Fulanese. And the socio-economic rights and accountability project Serap refuses to accept defeat in its pursuit of public asset declaration by public officers as it takes its case to the Court of Appeal. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. This is Plus Politics. Now, the presidency has revealed that it has uncovered the plot by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, to set the country against some of its allies, such as the US, the UK, and the European Union. In Westminster days, several Nigerians took to their social media pages calling on the government to also channel such criticisms and allegations towards Mieti Allah and the Fulani herdsmen allegedly responsible for killings in the country. The Human Rights Rights Association of Nigeria, that's Huriwa, has queried President Mahmoud Wari over failing to arrest the national president of Mieti Allah, Kautal Hore, Bello Abdelaye Badejo, who stated that the Fulani own Nigeria and will rule the country forever. Joining us to discuss this is Yerima Shatima, President of Adewa Youth Consultative Forum via phone, and also Anthony Obianeme of the Pan Nigerian Presidency of Igbo Extraction Coalition, that's Pampiek, and via Phone also via Zoom is Iachuku Ibeji, political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you very much. All right, Shetima, let me start off with you. Uh, what do you make of the statement credited to the national president of Mieti Allah Kautar Hore saying Fulali on Nigeria and will rule forever? Shetima. Yeah, uh, well, good evening, viewers. Good evening. Uh, well, it's unfortunate that uh, sometimes some statements are not supposed to be considered to be important. Even though I'm aware that the president of the Mieti Allah, Kalture, yesterday, I think they refuted the story by saying that uh, uh, he didn't actually say what was accredited to him. But however, uh, for me, the statement is childish. Because this is a country where you have over 400 ethnic nationalities. Uh, so that extent, again, it should be out of place for any particular tribe, a tribe which is just a unit to make such kind of comments, is unhealthy, is unwelcome, and such statement must not be encouraged. On a good day, I would have said this is not a story. But however, it's important to address issues the way they come so that at the end of the day, people will know that we are far beyond what they are thinking. This is my thought about it. All right, Iachuku, I need your quick reaction also to the same question, please. Iachuku. Well, I mean, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, I must say that I have also um, looked into the tunes of it. Uh, I'm hearing that he, he, the president has come out to, to um, deny, he uh, has come out to vehemently deny uh, those allegations, calling them unfounded and uh, infantile, uh, which is also good for him. But, you know, be that as it may, these are not, you know, this, this kind of statement, this kind of alleged statements are not the kind of statements we want to hear uh, in a country like Nigeria nowadays. It is, um, these are kind of statements that if, um, if found to be true, uh, very, very inflammatory. They can test the unity of this nation at large. And that is why you see the hue and cry, because every other um, group or every other group that is very desirous of the, of the unity and the peace of this nation uh, found out that these kind of statements are you know, very preposterous. You know, they are very, you know, they are statements that can, can really shake up the unity of this, na this nation. And that's why it is important that, um, that uh, the federal government um, should look into this kind of statements and wherever they come up and from wherever, from whomever they come up so that they are not seen to be in any way um, being partial in nature or siding one group or the other. Yes, and that is exactly what my point is to me. Anthony, 
Doesn't such utterances pose a threat to our national security and unity as it is? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very much glad with um, what is going on in this nation. On the comments some people are making, I'm not too glad on that. You see, we are hitting up, we already hit it up in this nation. So, Yerimor has made that comment, according to him, it's an application. But it's not good at this moment that we are looking for unity in this country. That is one of the reasons why Pam Nigeria presidency of Hebrew Extraction Coalition has been agitating for equity and justice, irrespective of whatever any organization has as their opinion. We should always maintain peace and unity. We shouldn't be making comments that will be derogatory in order to downsize the ethnic nationality or in order to improve one ethnic nationality to be superior to others. What we really need at this point in time is to talk about peace, justice, and political equity in Nigeria so that every ethnic nationality will be on one page. <clears throat> now, still, still with you, Anthony, on, on the one hand, the presidency has accused the Nnamdi Kanu-led indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, of setting Nigeria against some of, of its allies, such as the U.S. and the U.K. and the European Union and the country, while some Nigerians have also accused President Mohamed Buhari of double standards on this stance. I need your quick reaction to this, Anthony. Yeah, the same thing we are talking about here, what Champion is agitating for. We don't have much difference for what other organizations are talking about. For here, we are talking about political equity in one Nigeria. So what I probably is talking about is to have a political equity in a separate entity. What I probably is doing at this moment is trying to heat up the nation. It's trying to prove that yes, they are not settled. They are not secure in Nigeria. They need a nation of their own where they can be secure. I think based on this, the presidency will look into this matter with immediate and effect to correct the abnormality and balance the equation to make sure that every organization will come into a round table. That is one of the things we are doing to so dialogue with IPOP, dialogue with MASOP, dialogue with Iowa Consultative Forum, so that all of us, we know that we are members of this nation, that we shouldn't be running away from Nigeria. But when things like this happen, people will be talking differently. Now, Yarima, the, the national president yeah. of Miyeti Allah, Kautahore, Bello Abdullahi, mm. also said that his organization has concluded arrangements to flag off its own security outfit to be deployed across the country. If so, Shouldn't this be an act of parliament making such an utterance? Well, well, for me, I am an advocate of a community policy. But that if one side goes out to say they are working on any security outfit, for me, it won't be of best interest of this country. But if it's a regional arrangement, it's well developed, it's well welcome. If it's a thing that is a state thing, and arrange a particular state agree that they need a security outfit, it should be welcome. But when you have a particular tribe who says they just want to organize a security outfit, then uh, something must be wrong. So I have a problem with that. But I'm an advocate of community policy, and that has been my position over time, and I stand by it. Now, here, Chuku, the, the presidency has said that IPOP uses the false allegations of persecution of Christians against the, Niger as, against the Nigerian only as a fraudulent campaign, which has been receiving monthly funding of about 85,000 US dollars since October 2019. And I need your thoughts on this. A fraudulent well, campaign just as a means of getting money. The, well, these, are very, these, are very, these are very grievous uh, statements against IPOB, which... Uh, uh, incidentally, um, it's, a, it's a body that has been prescribed by, by, by the state. Um, now, the federal government and its entire apparatus of security and power is authorized by every means possible in a state 
with like Nigeria that is national in, in, in nature and has, has that has constituted authority to investigate any such um, incidences or any such allegations. And if they have made this investigation and they have come out to say to the Nigerian people that this is what their findings are, then it is something that requires serious attention from all bodies that are necessary and further investigation. But but by, by, by so saying, it should also um, um, be a, a statement that should also go around to every other body that will go ahead to, to do the same thing. Now, if what they are doing is not to be on the line of their purpose and their vision, right, and it is a monetary venture, then it is not altruistic. And if it is not altruistic, it further entrenches that body, IPOB, as an illegal body. That means that the federal government needs to go ahead and do further investigation into it. Because at the end of the day, whatever they do at the larger in the larger in the larger course of things affects the unity and purpose of this nation. And it's it's really it's really it's really uh, ridiculous. It's it's, um, it's something that is uh, um, it's, it's unthinkable uh, because you cannot have a state in an already constituted state. You cannot have a group that is considering itself as a state in its in, in the nation that is already um, has considered authority. All right, Anthony. Anthony, Anthony Obineme, I, I need your, your reaction also to this. That the presidency is alleging that IPOB uses uh, false allegations of persecution of Christians against the Nigerian only as a fraudulent campaign, which has been receiving monthly funding of eighty-five thousand U.S. dollars since October twenty nineteen. How do you react to this claim by the presidency? Yes. Coupled with what I said before, allegations and counter-allegations here and there wouldn't be a good reason for everybody to start moving desperately. I think it's supposed to be, at this point in time, an avenue for the presidency to summon the leadership of several organizations, irrespective of their agitations, so that he will the presidency will harmonize the issue so everybody will be happy so that when A goes there, B goes there, they will begin to portray that image to this nation. You can see so many ethnic nationalities arising up with allegations and counter-allegations so that there is no peace. I think what the presidency needs to do at this right time is to summon the leadership of ethnic nationalities and organizations to find a lasting solution for them to make their opinion and the opinions with the hand. Oh, I, I come to you now, Yerima. N Nigerians have called severally for this group, Miyeti Allah, Kauta Ori, who have, and do, from time to time, have carried out senseless killings in the north, especially in Kaduna, to be proscribed as a terrorist organization. And wonder why the presidency is hesitant in doing so. How do you react to this? Well, I'm not aware if some of these banditry act, action and inaction has to do with Nieti Allah. Uh, Nieti Allah is an organization of his own. The issue of banditry and some of those genocide and crime being committed in places like Zamfara, Kaduna, Katsina, and other places are banditry. That's a different problem. So we have to work one against the or we have to work one before the other. The Mieti Allah statement of lately is really not good for us. And I do not think that represents the true interest of the North. That's a different thing. After all, I'm, I'm not a Fulani, so probably they are, that's the Fulani's uh, ways of... Uh, I do also not think that it actually reflects the true interest of the generality of the Fulani. So that's just one organization among hundreds of organizations we have in the North that have to represent the interest of Fulani. That's one side. On the issue of crime being committed in other parts of the country, of course, to us, it's condemnable, and nobody will commit. And that's why oftentimes I keep saying that most of the problems that the country is going through today were at the receiving end of it than any part of this country. So an injury to one must be seen to be injury to us. And this is why I call Nigerians together. Let us look at this crime that is a crime against humanity so that all of us can all put our hands on this society. Because what is directly happening to North today will as well happen to the South tomorrow. So let us see it as a collective problem. Then we'll fight it all together. And those who are behind it so that they will be dealt with decisively. 
Now, Yechuko, let me come to you. I'm listening to Yerima um, speak, and I, I'm, I'm just only hope that that could be like a, a much reflection of the thoughts of many Northerners, you know, in, in, res, in regards to the activities of um, the Mieti Allah Kautau Hori, uh, which we know for some time um, they're, they're in charge of cattle breeders in, in, across the north. Now, the IPOP was proscribed as, as a terrorist organization by the presidency. Um, just like that, by the snap of a finger. Many people have called also for this group to be proscribed as a terrorist group. What, what do you think will be the, the reason for the delay, given the fact that, well, Yorima did say we cannot say for certain if those crimes, those kidnappings, banditries are perpetrated by, by members of the Mieti Allah. How do you react to this, to what Yorima just said? Ie Chuku. Okay, so um, if, if you look at... Um, the Mietali organization, Magban, if I, if, if I get that right, it has a structure. And, and that structure seems to have, um, it seems to have a very strong wellspring where they have full support. Now, if you look at the IPOB, the federal government would definitely be looking at the activities and ten, certain activities that they do, if they are violent or not. And that, those are some of the reasons that they may use to decide to say, okay, these are, this is, these are some of the steps that needed to prescribe such a group. But beside that point, the Mieta Ali, if found guilty of in any way advancing violence, um, advancing um, um, causes that are not what they are supposed to be advancing, then by all means, they deserve to be prescribed. And making this kind of statement, this, any st this such statements that are very, very capable of inflaming the state at a time where already we are faced with economic issues, we are faced with so much killing, we are faced with the COVID-19 as it is, that has made everybody so, so uh, that put us on the tentacles of, 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 of serious, of very serious uh, issues, then these are not the kind of uh, statements that we should make. And they are issues that the federal government should uh, take, take up and look into. They are not issues that should be, that should be looked at so, 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 uh, so kindly, uh, Benny. Anthony Obidem, in the likes of things and what um, here Chuku just said now, he found, if they're found culpable of some of these banditry and killings that have been taking place in the North, they should be proscribed. What is your stance on this? IPOP has been proscribed by the presidency as, as a terrorist organization. Do you think the Mieti Allah should also be proscribed as a terrorist organization? Yeah, to me, uh, this is a national question and a security matter. If I'm to come in here, I will say, what is good for the guys is good for the Gandhi. But let the federal government look into this matter critically and find out if what I thought is saying is a reality. And again, coupled with what is happening in this nation, some northern governors have given directives that these um, people should not be moving around, that they should be gathered somewhere and be taken care of. My advice here is that if the Iowa Youth Consulting Forum should look into this matter and also make a public statement that these people moving around from one place to the other should be restricted, then from there we know yeah. if what is, they are doing is right, what these people are doing is right or not. And finally, I want to say, if government finally find out that these people are culpable, they should be tagged as foreign group. I don't see any reason why I thought that it's not carrying guns should be tagged as foreign group. Now, Shatima, let me come back. Yorima, let me come back to you now. As um, what was the stance of the Arewa Youth Consultative Forum in, in regards to the activities of Mieti um, Allah Kautohori as it stands right now? I mean, has there been any? statement from, from your organization, from your group, in relation to Mieti Allah? Well, you see, Mieti Allah is an organization. And it does not speak for me. It does not speak for the entire North. They are just like any other organization. So for me, there are issues if they raise. Uh, we differ sometimes in principle. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, they are just like any other one. They just make statements. They are harmless. I do not think they can claim any violence happening in the entire country. They can't do that. And it's not true. But you know the impression over there in the southern part of the country, 
is that once there's an attack by one criminal, and it has, it has to do with a full and full involved in it, it will be considered to be a northern issue. When another tribe in southern part of the country commits a crime, either robbery or terrorism, it won't be called by his own tribe. They would rather say he's a criminal. Where is justice if we cannot call that same bandit criminal? Now you tag him to a particular tribe. You say either he's a man or he's from the north. It doesn't make anything. So we just have to face reality. But the reality is that injury to one is injury to all. A crime anywhere is a crime. A criminal from any tribe is a criminal. So let us look at it that way. Then we'll be able to solve our problems. But to align a particular tribe and say this particular tribe should be restricted from moving from one part of this country to another, it's not right. It will not be of best interest for this country. Yeah, but Yerima, now the question, the question of, Yerima, let me interject there. Now, the question of who regulates the activities of the Mieti Allah Kato Ore now comes to four. And I believe as the, the president of the Arawa Youth Consultative Forum, you guys should have some kind of say when it comes to this regard. The activities, who regulates the activities? Who, who, who takes responsibility for everything the Mieti Allah does in the north? They, they have their leadership. You made mention of him, you know, in Belo. He, he, he is their leader. It has nothing to do with us. Uh, Mayaki Allah is an organization for within Fulani themselves. And they have more than 100 of them existing. So Mayaki Allah is just one among the hundreds we are talking about. So if one of them is a statement, we should be able to look at it and look at issues. And that's why you see, when you make mention of them saying that they are going to hold power forever and ever in the country. And I said, no, this is not the position of the North, and it is not true. And I also understand that he refuted the story as of yesterday, so it is not true. So let us not make story out of nothing. This is democracy. It's about number. Do they have the requirement to hold on to the whole country? I have always believed as a Democrat that we run a system where vote counts. Majority carry the day. The minority have a say, then the majority took, uh, take the day. So let's be so. I'll come to you, Anthony Obineme. And, and finally, now, what, what is the imperative for the presidency now to tackle the unchecked activities of killings and unguarded utterances by and from this group in, in the light of our national unity and security? Anthony? Duly, yes. Yeah. 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 As it stands for now, during the lockdown, there is a policy on restriction of movement. And I think um, some people violated that policy. Based on this, there is a clear evidence that some people doesn't want to pay attention or pay the rules and regulations the government has given. So I think the best thing Government should do at this point in time that we are having crises here and there, killings uh, here and there, allegations here and there, is to set up a committee that will comprise all the ethnic nationalities to represent and to find out if the allegations are true and who is culpable of that should be punished. That is my own assertion. And for you, um, Ihechuku, what is imperative for the presidency in the light of all of this and in the light of our national unity and security? Quickly, please. It's crucial. It's very, very crucial at this, at this stage. Um, I, I'm tired of hearing committees. Uh, not that committees are bad, but uh, committees are good. But you know, they finish up their reports and then what, what becomes of those reports are another matter entirely. I think that what the federal government should do at this point uh, with, the, with the delicate situation that we are in as a nation, is to call all the groups together. Call all the groups together. And the ones that does not appear are the ones that are faceless. And then you see those groups down, clearly with the security and um, security and hierarchy right there, and you clearly state to them what should be done and what should not be done. You're not in any way identifying or giving authority to any group, but as long as they're going to exist as a group with leadership, and structure, they must be under the Constitutional Authority of Nigeria. It is so key at this point in time to call these groups to order because statements like this are the kind of statements that can go anywhere 
to cause him serious uh, problem to our unit here and then. Oh, and here so to, what's going on to me? Here to Gui Beji, political analyst. Thank you very much for your contribution on this segment. You're still with us on the next. And also, I want to say thank you, Anthony Obineme. Thank you very much for joining us on Plus so Politics and for your contribution. And also, the president, Arua Youth Consultative Forum, Yerima Shatima. Thank you for your time and for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break and when we return, Serap continues with its effort to ensure asset declaration among public officers. We'll be right back.